so for the free form, let me do it this way. I'm first going to just work it out, you know, not use ChatGPT. And if there's time remaining at the end, um, then then I will see how well ChatGPT does. Uh, I'm curious uh, how one might even use ChatGPT for the free form response, but that might actually be possible these days. Because ChatGPT's only limitation is that it can't draw figures, but it can describe figures. So. I'm curious. Um, let me set up things for me to do the free form time assessment. And as I keep have said before, 20 minutes is a tight amount of time, even for me. So I'll have to watch my clock carefully so that I don't run out of time as I'm working through this. And so one kind of um, aspect of it that's different from when you started, I've looked at the question just before the session so that I can verify that it's not one of the questions I've done. Um, but I don't think that's that big of an advantage because I wrote all these questions. It's not like there was ever a scenario where this would have been a new question to me. So. <laughs> So I think uh, I'm just saying this in the interest of full disclosure. So with that, let me start and uh, and we will. Wait, what? There's no previous attempt. Oh, I know why. Uh, it thinks that there's a previous attempt because I kind of opened it um, in the instructor role. So there's a kind of a record of, yeah, yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> I looked at it as an instructor to see what kind of questions uh, the test students will get. But the time limit shouldn't have started running because the student hasn't opened it. So let me start it and see if I still have time. <laughs> yeah, all right, I got 90 minutes. Yeah, and this is the question I've seen. Now, if we are looking at this question and thinking, oh, that I, you had that question earlier, it's a different. So the question that you might have seen in the other set, um, it's a motorcycle. And it's really written in a way to ensure that rotational kinetic energy will be minimal or negligible. Here, it's a solid steel ball. So it has a rotational inertia that you will have to take into account eventually. Otherwise, all the steps are pretty the same. So let's see here. It asks, what is the minimum speed needed at the top? Yeah, that's actually exactly the same as um, what we've done in the other uh, set. So, um, so where it says remains in contact, really what it is saying is it's giving you this condition that if you draw the free body diagram for the ball at the top, then at the top here, it'll have two forces on it. There'll be gravity that's always there. And it'll have normal force that's pushing away from the surface. And the condition of remains in contact means n is not equal to zero. Because once normal force is equal to zero, then the surface isn't pushing anymore. The ball is no longer in contact. And uh, because you are looking for minimum speed, we are really looking for n to just barely go to zero. That's the situation we are looking at. So um, so I already drew a free body diagram. This requires a force analysis so that you can, um, so it's a standard strategy problem. I first step through free body diagram. Second step, uh, I need to define my coordinate axis. I think I'm going to define downward as positive x, and it's one dimensional. Um, and it is, in fact, accelerating downward towards the center. It's a centripetal acceleration. So that's important to note for this question. Um, step number three, break down forces. Don't need to, it's one dimensional. Step number four, write down Newton's second law equation. So this is a centripetal acceleration, which again is equal to V squared over R, is equal to the net force divided by mass of the ball. So for the net force, it's just going to be gravity because I'm looking at the situation where normal force goes to zero. So mg divided by m, the mass is canceled. Good, because I don't think they gave us the mass. Um, and I can solve for a uh, velocity. And that will give me my free minimum. So speed here, move r over. So speed squared is rg. So for just the speed by itself, nothing squared. I have to take square root of both sides. So this 
would be the minimum speed needed. Any speed higher than this is totally fine. Your normal force just won't be zero. Any speed less than this, uh, it has completely lost the context. So it's not going to follow the circular track. It's going to fall off of the circular track. So for the answer here, I'll say v min is equal to square root of r times g. And, um, yeah, and the, the rest, uh, it will be in attached to work. Uh, for the minimum speed, what is the net force on the steel ball if when it is at position A, Martin, the figure above. Oh, uh, I gotta read this carefully. Uh, steel ball. Um, mm. So it doesn't, ah, uh, here it is. <laughs> Ignore all the effect of friction. So friction is what makes the steel ball spin, uh, rotate. So, so far for part B, I can ignore rotational inertia. So, yeah, so it's a part A and B then is actually identical to the previous question you might have seen uh, in the previous set. So, uh, let me just keep going with that. So, B. Um, so, what I need, let me first draw the figure. So, for A, this is the portion that I'm looking at. So, if I'm drawing the free body diagram of that body, it's got two forces still, there's gravity, mg, and here the surface is vertical, so normal force will still be away from surface, horizontally to the left. Uh, so, as you look at this uh, figure, I think I'm going to break a rule. Um, so, in the standard strategy, what we have said is, you know, figure out the direction of acceleration, and uh, choose your axis along the direction of acceleration. And um, I don't think that's going to lead to most uh, natural way of problem solving here. So I'm going to break that rule. Um, a lot of the rules of problem solving, they're meant to be broken. But uh, the thing is to first to learn to learn the rules, learn how to apply them so that you can see when they don't quite apply very well and you can do something different. So this is uh, how I'm going to do something different. I'm just going to consider the regular straight axis. I have a horizontal axis. I have a vertical axis. And I think I can actually d describe components of acceleration along these axis pretty well. Along the vertical direction, that's a tangential direction. And here I think I know my acceleration is just going to be G, right? Nothing complicated. And all my centripetal acceleration, that's in this part. So the acceleration in the horizontal direction, that is my centripetal acceleration, and that will be V squared over R. So, so having done that, you know, chosen my axis, regular straight axis, I will then just to, um, work through the rest. Step number three is breaking forces into components. I don't have to. Both the forces are along one of the two axes. And step number four is writing Newton's second law equations. Here, for the sake of completeness, let me write all both of them. So the like, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. My acceleration along the x direction is going to be my centripetal acceleration, which will be my net force in the x direction divided by m. Um, or that's just the normal force, so normal force divided by m. Um, and the, the centripetal acceleration is still V squared over R. But this V will be different V from this V mean. Uh, my acceleration along the Y direction, I define the downward as positive, is um, the net force in the Y direction, mg, divided by mass or G, you know, what I was saying before. So, you know, the second equation, I can ignore it. I didn't really need to write it down. I want you to write it down for completeness's sake. Uh, the equation that I'm working through is really this first to one that's uh, here. This is the equation I need. Uh, let's see what they're asking for. They are asking for um, what is the net force on the steel ball when it's at this position. Okay, I already have this component of force. So I only need the normal force. That's really what they are uh, looking for. Once I figure out normal force, then I can figure out the rest. So um, solving that for normal force, I have normal forces m 
v squared over r. Um, so I need an expression for v squared. And this is the step of the mixed strategy where you need to bring something other than force analysis. This is the step where I need um, conservation of energy to figure out what the speed at this point should be so that um, um, so that I can use the correct value of v. So I'm looking at, this is one of the snapshots that I had. Um, so this is my A snapshot and my B snapshot is here. Um, there's a difference in height from here to here. That's radius R. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use conservation of energy because that makes sense to me. And I'm going to ignore all the, uh, the rotation stuff. So it'll be, um, so total energy at snapshot A is equal to total energy at snapshot B. At snapshot A, um, let me set my Y is equal to zero at the very bottom. So my potential energy at snapshot A is mg times 2R uh, plus, and it has kinetic energy, one half mv min squared is equal to total energy at snapshot B. It has potential energy mgr plus it has kinetic energy also one half m v just v squared so looking at it it looks like a mass still cancels out which makes me happy because i don't know the mass i don't want it in my final expression looks like one term of gr when i move it over it'll cancel out this two so i have one half of v squared here so multiply through by two to solve for v That'll give or v squared. That'll give me v squared is equal to multiplying through by two. I get two back, so it's two g r plus one half cancels, so v min squared. So the normal force here would be m over r times two g r plus v min squared, and I probably would have just leave it here. Um, I I could plug in v min do some simplification, but in case I make mistakes, I think I'm fine leaving it here. So horizontal component of force, normal force, is equal to uh, m over r times 2gr plus v min squared, v min uh, from above in a. Um, and the vertical component of force, gravity is mg. Um, the net force is the vector sum of these two forces. Okay, how much time do I have? I might have to go faster. Eight minutes. Okay, so let me do C relatively quickly. I will do this uh, without a lot of explanation because for me it's the explanations that eat up a lot of time. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, from I actually here know the answer. H is equal to a uh, five half r. I've done this enough times to have the answer memorized, but let me just scratch up some work so that it's not completely, um, you know, unexplained. Uh, so I'm looking at this situation here. I think I can still call this snapshot A, and let me call this snapshot now um, C. So um, for snapshot A, I have a v min, uh, which was let's see square root of r over g i mean r times g um so here i think uh, energy is conserved starting from the beginning to the end so i'll use conservation of energy so for conservation of energy what i would say is okay total energy in snapshot c is equal to total energy in snapshot a in snapshot c i have potential energy of mgh, and I have kinetic energy of zero, starting from rest, and it's not rolling, I think, um, ignoring friction, yeah. So snapshot at A, I have potential energy of mg2r, plus the kinetic energy of one half m v min squared, then I think I can do this a substitution. Let me do that, so after squaring it, it becomes rg, We see that mass cancels out again. Beautiful. Didn't want it. And it's asking for 
h, so solving for h, h is divided by g, so I have 2r plus, uh, oh, g's cancel actually, I could just cancel it throughout. Uh, so 2r plus 1 half r, which uh, combining the fraction, you know, 2 is uh, 4 over 2, so 4 over 2 plus 1 half is 5 over 2r. Again, I had the correct answer. Not because I'm cheating, but because I have it memorized. <laughs> I'm on video. How would I cheat? Other than the fact that I have it memorized, because I've done this question so many times. Um, okay, part D. This is a really the new part. Um, this is the part that requires the material that we have covered since last uh, uh, time the assessment. Of six minutes, I think that's enough amount of time. So um, it says, suppose that a substantial yeah, friction coefficient exists. So that um, so in quantitative terms, in or sorry, in qualitative terms, now the um, uh, still ball uh, rules without slipping, uh, meaning it's a angular velocity omega can be related to its translational velocity v by v is equal to r times omega, where r is the radius of the steel ball. Not to be confused with r, the radius of the ball. Um, yeah, so that's a one. Um, and uh, oh, um, so that's not so. So for the analysis in C, we have an additional term for energy, the rotational kinetic energy. So uh, qualitatively speaking, uh, this will make the necessary height h uh, higher because um, the, uh, I'll just, because the required V mean is still the same, uh, while additional energy for rotational kinetic energy is needed. So, so that's the qualitative answer. For the rest, I'll have to um, actually rework it out. Um, so let me do it this way. I got four minutes. I think the quickest way to do it is to basically copy and then uh, modify it in place. So, so the pictures, they're all fine. Nothing there needs to change. Really, the only thing that needs to be added or augmented is to say, uh, this is now, as it's going, it's uh, rotating with omega. So in the total energy terms, um, there will now be um, the, there will be kine rotational kinetic energy terms Fortunately for C, uh, that's still zero because um, it's starting out at rest. So uh, zero translational kinetic energy. Um, so and also zero rotational kinetic energy. It's not rotating either. But for the snapshot A, now we'll have plus one half rotational inertia times angular velocity squared. So we need to um, <laughs> we need two things. One, we need the rotational inertia, and I think I have it memorized. Rotational inertia of a sphere should be two fifth uh, mass of the sphere times r squared for rotational body. It's the center of mass uh, for a solid sphere. Um, let me look it up after the time limit expires to make sure I have the value correct. For omega, uh, what I can replace it with is v over r and uh, let me just uh, uh, and uh, let me just uh, here uh, bring back in v mean squared so it would be actually v mean so let me write out up the, the cleaned up version of the energy conservation equation that comes from this added term so we have mgh is equal to mg2r that part didn't change plus one half m v mean squared. That part didn't change. And this part changes. Let me just write it out carefully. We have one half two fifth m r 
Oh, wait, I gotta be careful with the R's. Oops, well, what did I do? I think I'm in the wrong spot. Um, I have to be careful with the R's because here I want to make sure it's the radius of the sphere, not the track. So I really need to say it's the lowercase r. R squared times V min over R, lowercase r squared. Uh, so as you look at it, I hope you see this uh, fortunate cancellation. The size of the stubble doesn't matter. This r squared is cancelled out by this r squared. And in fact, I think I can combine these two terms to save on math a little bit. It's going to be one half plus one half times two fifths, so one fifth. Um, yeah. And then they have the common term of m, and they have v mean squared together. So the fully cleaned up version of this equation will now be mgh is equal to mg2r plus combining these two fractions, um, it's going to be 7 tenth. Um, you can do it on your own. <laughs> Double check that I did it correctly. Mm -hmm. and, and the v-min was uh, square root of rg. So squaring, it should be rg. Now we can cancel the same stuff we were canceling before. Mass cancels, G cancels. And so here it's really 2R plus 7 tenth of R. So I think I can write it as 2.7R. So the minimum height uh, mean H is 2.7R to ensure that the stable rolls through without losing contact with the track. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> I wasn't even checking the clock. Uh, did it actually save it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it saved it. All right. Good, good, good. So let me attach my work and then let's just, oh, as I'm attaching my work, let's double check that I um, had the correct value of rotational inertia remembered. Um, and you, know, this is the kind of thing that I do encourage you to do. Um, you should feel like you have additional time to attach work. The work being attached, it doesn't have to be done like you are running out of time because there's no time limit there. Um, I want to say it's a table is in this section. Uh, uh, let's see. Sphere, solid sphere, about any, yeah, two fifth MR squared. That's exactly what I had. So that's correct. Um, let me just uh, copy and paste the rest of the stuff. So uh, we have uh, something like five minutes. I think that's enough time to see um, how well ChatGPT does on a question like this. Um, I, I, I'm curious. Because a good portion of the question can be described using text alone. It's not as though it has to be able to read any images to generate its own answers. And um, on the cheating student side, there's a few options. You can either just copy and paste the text to make it super obvious that you're cheating. Or for people who are trying to avoid the detection, I can imagine some people kind of drawing their own figures. Because ChatGPT will give you your answer in what? Something like um, in less than five minutes, you do have 15 minutes to try to uh, hide the um, hide the, the evidence of cheating. So, so let's see if I can do it. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm not going to take all um, 20 minutes that the potential cheater would, but um, let me just uh, see what ChatGP, what kind of starting point the ChatGPT gives. I think that will be interesting to see. So I have the question here, and uh, uh, I think I can ask a part by part because this time I'm actually trying to read it through. Uh, um, so let's see. Consider a solid state radius. R, we're rolling through a vertical loop of radius, capital R, at a fast enough speed so they maintain contact. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Okay. 
and uh, I think I can send it and it'll remember that I asked this and then it'll, yeah, what would you like to know about the system? <laughs> RA, what is the minimum speed we mean needed at the top of the moon? Yeah. Uh, ChatGPT is going to do that anyway. So, let's see. Normal force must be at least a zero, meaning not negative, right? Um, that's going to lead to sign error, by the way, um, which it ignores. Because the way they set up the system, uh, unless there's, there's no minus sign here, so you got, but it gets the right answer anyway. But uh, there is a sign error here. <laughs> I'm sure the sign error comes from the training text. Uh, it's a sign error made by the check tutor. Uh, who was solving similar question. Uh, for, but, you know, that is actually correct answer. So, uh, <laughs> for the minimum speed of we mean, that I found in, uh, found in previous part. Don't think I numbered it. Previous part. What is the net force when it's at the position of, uh, when at a position, um, in the vertical part of the track at height r from the ground yeah it's repeating what it did before i wonder if we can figure out in the vertical part of the track, yeah. It's not moving it with a const constant velocity. Um, yeah, so I think it got it wrong. Because um, uh, it's uh, saying constant velocity, it's a uniform circular motion. So let me see if I can get a, get it to say, uh, but in the, when the ball is in the vertical, uh, out of the track, it is undergoing a circular motion, i.e. not constant velocity in the horizontal direction. Yeah, and with that little nudge, it does Get the correct answer, but it's still. I don't think it really understands the vectors, um, or it doesn't have enough training text for. Yeah, yeah, it's still getting it wrong. Okay, so starting with the part B, it's struggling. It can't do it right, um, which is good. <laughs> I like it when ChatGPT can't answer the uh, questions right, because at the moment I I can imagine a future where it's a wonderful tutor. I I can imagine that happening in some. Uh, future where I'm still alive, but um, we're not there yet. And at the moment, it's more useful as a cheating tool than a teaching tool. So um, because it's more of a cheating tool than teaching tool, I would like it to be a terrible tool. I'm pretty sure it will get this answer correct because it's a, such a classic setup that there are many other Many, there should be many examples of it in its training text to get this right. So, um, oh, we it didn't get it right. So I think it quite didn't quite get h top is double the radius, not just the radius. So, so if I say, but uh, h top is equal to two r because it's one diameter from the ground. And I think it'll actually correct it correctly. Uh, ah, no, never mind. Uh, actually, is it? Uh, it's good, introducing a whole bunch of complications with the cosine theta and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not doing that right. Okay, so uh, last part. Okay, last part. In quality, how does your anal previous analysis change? Mm -hmm. 
which couldn't find before. Uh, it can't throw diagrams. Ah, that's wrong. With uh, rolling without slipping, actually uh, nothing goes into heat. Um, it, uh, I guess uh, to the extent there's any kind of conversion of energy, it goes from translational kinetic energy to rotational kinetic energy. So well, it doesn't lose any of its mechanical energy. Yeah, so it did part A well. I think the rest of it, it just uh, messed up and didn't quite do right. Um, yeah, it, um, let me see. Can you consider the rotational inertia or just global? Um, I mean, knows the correct formula, but I'm pretty sure it can't integrate this with its previous work. Uh, yeah. uh, I can imagine someone making use of that, uh, but if you're using ChatGPT as a learning tool, the challenge will be figuring out what it's doing correctly and what it's doing poorly. Um, there's a, something about solution manuals I used to say to students that solution manuals tend to have a lot of errors because uh, textbooks, it goes through a lot of revision, editing, quality control, but um, solution manuals, don't, they don't. They are usually written by poor graduate students who's making a quick buck <laughs> writing solution for the official solution manual. So they tend to have a lot of errors and they are really meant for teachers who can spot those errors and not uh, be confused by the errors. And I think, uh, you know, these ChatGP tensors are kind of like those solution manuals, except worse, because at least the solution manuals are written by human beings with the expertise in the subject, whereas this is a, just a large language model. It doesn't know anything. 